Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's worship service for Sunday, uh, May 10th, this beautiful Mother's Day morning. We'd like to wish all the mothers out there a wonderful Mother's Day. We invite everyone to, uh, to find a copy of today's bulletin. Uh, it can be found in the description below this video on Facebook and YouTube, and it can also be found on our website, www.centralprespb.com, under the publications link at the top of the webpage. Uh, let's go ahead and turn our attention to the announcements on the back of that bulletin. Uh, let me find it. Archives of our online services can be found at Facebook and YouTube. Links to each are on our website, www.centralprespb.com. And uh, lastly, CPC now has online giving available. Check out our website and look for the Donate Now link at the top of the webpage. We take credit cards, debit cards, and checks, and you can set up one-time or recurring donations on a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly basis. With that, let us worship God. In life, in death, in life beyond death, Jesus Christ is Lord. Over powers and principalities, over all who determine, control, govern, or finance the affairs of humankind, Jesus Christ is Lord. Of the poor, of the broken, of the sinned against, and the sinner, Jesus Christ is Lord. Above the church, Beyond our most excellent theologies and in the quiet corners of our hearts, Jesus Christ is Lord. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our God is a God of justice, waiting to be gracious to you, yearning to have pity on you. Blessed are all who wait for the Lord. In penance and faith, let's confess our sins to Almighty God, first using the prayer printed in the bulletin and then silently. God of God, our light, our Savior, our home, we humble ourselves before you, having refused many of your gifts. You invite us to taste that you are good. We cultivate tastes for lesser things. You show us yourself that we might believe. We close our ears and eyes to you. You offer us refuge in salvation. We resort to violence as we, seek to our, as we seek our own security. You call us to be living stones built into a spiritual house. We disobey your word and stumble upon the foundation you provide. Forgive us, God of mercy. Let your face shine upon us again that we may grow into salvation and serve you with faithfulness and hope. And now silently. Amen. <clears throat> People born of water and the spirit, we have died to the old life and a new life has begun. God's grace is poured out upon us day by day. Come to the water and remember your baptism. Be thankful and live as one who has been raised to new life. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the seventh chapter of the book of Acts, beginning with the 54th verse and proceeding through verse 60. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. When they heard these things, they became enraged and ground their teeth at Stephen. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing in the, at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him, and the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. 
Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Our second reading comes from the second chapter of 1 Peter, beginning with the second verse and proceeding through verse 10. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. <clears throat> Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And finally, from the 14th chapter of the Gospel according to John, beginning with the first verse and proceeding through verse 14. Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me <clears throat> that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. <coughs> Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, <clears throat> so that as your word is read and proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear, that hearing we might believe, and that believing we might live lives of richer and fuller service, glorifying you here on earth as you are glorified in heaven. 
Amen. If these walls could talk, have you ever been somewhere and thought those words, somewhere famous or historic, somewhere shrouded in mystery or notoriety, somewhere that for no apparent reason gave you goosebumps or made the hairs on the back of your neck bristle? If these walls could talk, would they make us laugh or cry? Would they call to mind memories that we had long ago forgotten? Would they reveal our best and brightest moments? Or would they reveal those moments that are so embarrassing that the mere thought of them is enough to make us blush? What do we, as living stones built into a spiritual house, say about who and whose we are? Well, first of all, the cornerstone of this spiritual house is our Lord Jesus Christ, who was rejected by mortals but deemed precious in God's sight. As such, our Lord establishes the pattern for our daily living. Consider for a moment just how truly radical a statement it is to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. His and only his is the example we are to follow. His and only his is the love we are to exhibit. His and only his is the faithfulness we are to emulate. His and only his is the obedience unto death that we are all to demonstrate. Before his arrest, Jesus warned his disciples, if the world hates you, be aware that it hated me before it hated you. If you belong to the world, the world will love you as its own, but because you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. And as our reading from Acts reminds us this morning, it was not just the world that exhibited such hate, hatred. In fact, in the book of Acts this morning, we read of the martyrdom of Steve, Stephen at the hands of those within God's chosen covenantal community. Just prior to this account of his death, Stephen had been called to appear before the religious leaders of Israel and to answer to the charges that he had blasphemed <clears throat> against the temple. His defense was a rather lengthy speech, which celebrated both the grace of God and God's mercy, while also pointing out Israel's sordid history in rejecting God's ways. And then in the verses immediately preceding this morning's reading, Stephen says to the religious leaders, you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you are forever opposing the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors used to do. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, and now you have become his betrayers and murderers. You are the ones that received the law as ordained by angels, and yet you have not kept it. Little wonder, then, that they stoned him to death. But the point I'm making here is that Jesus was rejected, and just as he was rejected, so would his disciples be. But interestingly, and most importantly, God never rejects us. We are told that as he was being stoned, Stephen was given a glimpse of Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Inherent in receiving such a vision is that Stephen was so favored by God that he was allowed this glimpse into heaven. Now, God's favor is never a guarantee of an easy life in this world. 
living stones built into a spiritual house to render praise to God will always endure the onslaught of every other voice competing for our attention, demanding our allegiance, and seducing us to bow down and worship them. But ours remains the radical task of professing and living the truth that Jesus Christ is our Lord. And lest we grow fearful, we would do well to remember that the second thing our witness about who and whose we are is that we all have a place where we belong. Regardless of our race or our age, our gender or our social standing, or any other grouping which may attempt to divide or exclude, there is always room for us. Our master builder never looks at a person and says, there's a stone I just cannot use. Rather, our master builder, the carpenter of Nazareth, looks at each of us and says, I have the perfect place for that living stone. One commentator notes, if recent research is correct in its understanding that the audience of First Peter <clears throat> consisted of persons who are displaced and dispossessed, not only spiritually or religiously, but socially, economically, and politically, then what the author does here is asserts that in Christ, God creates a new place for those who have none. In Christ, God creates a new place for those who have none. Jesus says as much to his disciples as part of his farewell discourse in John's gospel. He's just hours away from his arrest and crucifixion when he says to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. We tend to associate Jesus' words here with our heavenly home, which explains, I think, in part why these words are so often requested to be included in a funeral service. But Jesus was not just speaking of a heavenly place to spend eternity. Rather, he was also pointing to a reality where we are always, always in the presence of our heavenly Father. God is pleased to dwell with us here and now. God is pleased to have an intimate relationship with us here and now. Far from being isolated or alone, we have a place where we belong. And that place is in the presence of a gracious and loving God. Jesus further emphasizes this great truth when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I believe it's unfortunate that many churches use this as an opportunity to kind of use a litmus test of who's included and who's excluded. It's as if, if you don't accept Jesus as the way, there is no hope for you. But that's not what Jesus was saying. What Jesus was saying is, as a sinful humanity, none of us can approach God. It took him, the perfect son of God, son of man, to give us access to God. And so what he says when he says no one can come to the Father except through me is, he says, I'm the only perfect one. I'm the one who can lead you into the presence of Almighty God. Isn't that amazing? If these walls could talk, what would they say? And how might that work and those words shine light 
in our present darkness today. To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would ask now, at this time, that you would please join me and confirm what it is that we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, mighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It is now to, uh, time to um, let us now return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and offerings. Uh, again, you can make those uh, tithes online at www.centralprespb.com and click the Donate Now link in the top corner. Uh, you can also uh, mail your tithes into the church to 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. And so, O oh God, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves for you to use as you see fit. Until that most glorious day when at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend and every tongue shall confess him, Lord, to your honor and glory. Amen. At this time, it is time to uh, let us share our joys and concerns. Um, the only uh, prayer uh, concern that we uh, have received this week is, uh, uh, Rose and Susie would like everyone to continue to keep uh, Brad Von Tunglin in your prayers. Um, he is uh, not feeling very well at this time. Uh, we continue to pray for our... Uh, our frontline responders, our nurses, doctors, medical professionals, um, our fire, police, um, uh, military, um, and those who are currently going through the process of reopening their businesses. Um, the, uh, we, want to, we want the Lord to be with those people as they reopen. Uh, pray that they do not contract the virus or spread the virus and uh, that they may have successful reopenings. Um, Holy and gracious Father, we give you thanks that the, for the, that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same today as he was yesterday and will be, will be for all of our tomorrows. We ask that you be with those who are reopening. You ask, we ask that you please stop the spread of this horrible virus and that you protect those who are going to be in harm's way in the coming days. We ask that you be with the, the medical professionals and the um, other uh, first responders who are dealing with this crisis. And we also ask that you be with Bradley Von Tunglin as he's uh, having uh, complications from his medical issues. Give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit. 
taking today's message with you, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.